And this new Kenya, uh, we are trying to get everybody to accept the truth as it is. Uh, the unprovoked and unwarranted attack on the U.S. ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman, is as a result of people being allergic to the truth and the reality. <laughs> ambassador Meg Whitman and other ambassadors were at bombers throughout the counting of votes. They had access to the public portal. They had calculators. They are educated. And they have done some bit of mathematics. They added the numbers. They observed. And they were clear that the election was won fair and square. And it was open, democratic, and meets the best international standards. What the ambassador is saying is that is the truth. So she is being attacked and vilified by saying what everybody knows. I want to request leaders to accept the truth and the reality and move on. Life is not static. Life is dynamic. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down, and so on. Again, I want to request our leaders to exercise patriotism to their motherland. President William Ruto inherited a difficult situation. I said in Kasarani on the inauguration day on the 13th of September last year, and some people thought I'm mischievous, and they thought probably I'm mannerless to say the truth in front of visitors. And I said the kind of economy we had inherited, and the coffers were empty, and in our stores even rats had disappeared because there was nothing to eat. And the president has embarked on a very difficult journey of the economic transformation of this great republic. Along the way, we have found good friends. Ambassador Meg Whitman, in a record time, has increased the volume of trade between Kenya and the United States. That as I speak today, the United States of America is Kenya's largest trading partner in the world. She has taken time to sit with the president, to sit with me, to sit with our cabinet ministers, to unlock business opportunities and to bring investors from America. What she deserves is commendation, not verification for being truthful. I want to urge Ambassador Meg to ignore the noises and acclimatize to the Kenyan way of doing things. Perennial complaints year after year. She should stay focused and go on with her work. I want to say that we need also to be respectful to our development partners. You cannot speak in a public forum before national television and say that you have the capacity to recall an ambassador from the United States accredited to this country by the American government. It's simply being mischievous. As a private citizen, how would you recall an ambassador? You cannot even transfer an assistant chief in your local subluxation. You know, it's part of the, the denial syndrome. You know, you know what was happening during the hardship regime? It's something that happened that, happened that nobody can comprehend. That cabinet ministers were being told to go and brief a private citizen on what is happening in government. Principal secretaries were being told to go and brief a private citizen on the workings of government. The CS National Treasury was being told to go and brief a private citizen about the budget. That is why that private citizen thinks he can recall the American ambassador to go back to the country. That situation is over. We have a government in place. Please just take up your rightful role and oversight government because that is your role. Again, I want to say that the hardship team, after destroying the economy of this country, 
gave President Ruto no chance because they knew it was almost impossible to turn around the country. In a record one year, President William Ruto, through pragmatic leadership, continuous engagement, agreeing to be advised, having a very competent, competent economic council, has done the unthinkable. In one year, the economy has shown signs of recovery to the extent that for the first time in seven years, all county governments were given their money before the closure of the financial year on June 30th. All members of parliament and the respective constituency development funds in the 290 constituencies were given all the allocation before the closure of the financial year on June 30th. So the people who had skimmed to destroy the economy so that the next leader can fail are very envious. And that is why they are bitter. And that is why they are trying to portray our friends as bad people. What is happening, and I want to invite our brothers to understand, this William Ruto you despised and you gave him no chance. Today, he is the desired visitor of every capital in the world. If he was to honor the invitations to the countries he is being asked to visit, he would be out of this country for 360 days in a year. And that is why people are envious. They thought that the West would not embrace him. They thought that the East would not embrace him. They characterized him as somebody unworthy of leadership. They said he is a thief. They said he is corrupt. They say the bottom-up economic agenda is a farce. In one year, he has become the leading light in the African continent. He is being sought by every country in Africa to speak for Africa. So I want to ask our brothers and sisters to just accept and move on. Life is that simple. It is that simple. Again, the president talked about corruption in the county governments and the national governments. There is no corruption for the national government and the county governments. Corruption is corruption in its very form. And this government will deal with the corruption in the national government, in the county governments, and in the country. We know that some people are very uncomfortable because previously, Governors have been untwisted to give money obtained fraudulently and corruptly to fund political activities. With this new war on corruption in the county governments, it is no longer going to be possible to coerce governors from your coalition to give you money for politics. That is a problem. That is a problem. So we understand where they are coming from. We feel you. We feel you. We know you are in a difficult situation. Finally, I want to say we are ready to work with the county government across the political landscape. We don't care in what political formation you are in. And we have told our people, we have told the administration, we have told the police to keep off politics because they are not good at it. It is foolish to use administrators and police in your politics. You will lose. That is how Uhuru and Raila lost by using chiefs and assistant chiefs and police in politics. We cannot repeat the same mistake. So chiefs, assistant chiefs, county commissioners, OCS, OSPD, they have no business in politics. Their work is to give services to the people of Kenya. Is to fight crime, is to fight illicit brew, is to register farmers, is to espouse government policy and keep up politics. Even governors elected on the opposition platform will enjoy the services of the administrators and the police and everybody else in an equitable and fair manner like the rest of the country. And therefore, let us work together. I am available for consultation with the COG in a structured manner. I am available to individual governors 
You don't need an appointment to come to my office as an elected governor. Anybody who has been elected by 100,000 people is not a joke. That is somebody who needs no appointment to go anywhere. Being 100,000 people who slept in a different home and they have not talked and they all come to the ballot and decide you are the right person.